Good, Good morning, morning, Valley Christian Center Online. We are so excited to be with you. Hey, before we get things rolling, let's do a greeting. Whoever you are doing church with this morning, hey, you can give them a hug, a high five, a fist pump, or maybe a chicken wing. We just want to be excited about doing church online this morning. If it's just you at home, hey, we see you too. Go ahead and text someone. Good morning. It's Sunday. Give them a call after church just to check in and let's stay connected and be unified as we get to do church online, which is so amazing, and stay connected through these trying times that we are in. So, my name is Monica Schneider, and I serve as the team's director here at Valley Christian Center. And my name is Jason Schneider. I serve as pastor to Steadfast Youth. And hey, shouts out to all of our life group leaders for doing the Zoom and our correspondence team. You guys have been so amazingly awesome. Thanks for being awesome, guys. And if you're new with us for the first time, hey, hello. It's good to meet you through the online way. And we would just love to connect with you. So drop a comment right now as you're watching service or head to the link on the website and make sure in the subject line you put I'm new and someone's going to be connecting with you soon. And as you prepare to give your tithes and offering this morning, you can continue to do so mm -hmm. on our vccfresno.org slash give or our VCC Fresno app. And you can also continue text to give at 559-400-7865. And you can still mail in your tithes and offerings right here to Valley Christian Center. Now, family, would you join us as we pray over today's tithes and offering? Father God, we ask for continued trust in this season. Please bless our provisions. Bless your people as they give today. Holy Spirit, we ask for joy as we trust you in all things. And in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Life groups and Zoom groups, they are moving and grooving and they are waiting for you. Yes, you. They're waiting for you. You can head over to vccfresno.org slash life groups. Look up a group that you'd like to be plugged into. Go ahead and contact that leader and they'll be reaching out to you. If you are interested in a Zoom group, we've got some Zoom groups available to you, whether that's a life group that's already moving or some new ones like Courtyard Fellowship, just like we would do on a Sunday after service, or we've got ones moving through the week that have a sermon discussion, fellowship, and prayer. So we've got something for everybody. So make sure you head over to the Life Group page, fill out that form about joining a Zoom group, and we will have a leader reach out to you. Nervous about Zoom? Guess what? We want to help you in that process. So go ahead and still fill out that form, and someone can reach out to you and how Zoom works and how you can get that process moving. Even if you're a little nervous about it, we want to partner with you. All you ladies out there, we have Pastor Chrissy. She's going to be giving a special Sunday night announcement. So you want to stay tuned after today's service to get that. Absolutely. Now, families, join us, grab your Bibles, and let's get ready for our senior pastor, Rainy Charest, as he is going to bring us When God Presses Pause. to worship, I just wanted to start out with a verse that I feel like is appropriate for this time. From Matthew 6, verse 25, it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and your body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? verse 34, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. 
And I just wanted to share that because I feel like it's so appropriate for our time. It's so easy to give into worry and anxiety and fear and um, just to worry about what the day holds or what the future holds. And I just want to pray over you right now that as we worship this morning, God, that you would just speak peace and calm over your children, that they would be able to see their value in your eyes, that they would know how much they are worth to you and how you are our provider, God, that you are our support, that you are our anchor, that you are our solid foundation, and that through it all, we can depend on your goodness. Amen. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the King
children and that we have great value because we are your children. God, and we want to build our foundation on you and on you alone. So as we continue to worship, let's just declare this today, that we will build our life upon his love, that he will be our firm foundation. And I will build my life upon your God, we rest in your goodness. We rest in the security and the peace that we find in your love for us, that you are our ultimate provider. God, that you shelter us under your wing like a hen gathers her chicks, God, that you want nothing more than for good things to happen in our life. So we rest in you and we praise you, God, in your name, amen. Good morning. This is a TV remote. I love my TV remote. With this TV remote, I can turn a quiet show louder. If I don't even like the show, I can change the channels. One of the arguments husband and wives have is who gets control of the remote? I especially like the pause button on the remote. Someone's being too loud or you get a phone call, put the show on pause and get back to it. 
Guys, always try to get control of the remote. I'm curious who's holding the remote right now in your house. <laughs> I'd like to find out. They say a good way to get a man to do sit-ups is to tape the remote between his toes. Men like remotes. There's a sense of power in the remote. And especially because when you have the remote and you hit the pause button, everything stops for a moment. And we're going to discover today that the ultimate remote, the universal remote, belongs to God. And today's message is called, When God Presses Pause. And if you would, let's open in prayer. Father, I thank you today that right now the Word of God is coming into the homes of my dear brothers and sisters. I pray as we share God's Word today that it would inspire, it would give us hope, it would free us, and it would bring us closer to Jesus Christ. So I thank you for the privilege of bringing God's Word today and help us receive it in its fullness. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. You know, throughout history and throughout the Word of God, there are many instances where the Lord decided things weren't going the way He liked, and He hit the pause button. And we're going to look at one of those stories in the New Testament with a young man filled with passion whose name was Saul. And God was about to cause a pause in Saul's life. And so if you have your Bibles or your Bible app, turn to Acts 9, 1 through 19. That's our scripture verse for today. Acts 9, 1 through 19. And we're going to discover that God loves to show us that he's still in charge. As a matter of fact, there's a great psalm, Psalm 77, 14. It says this, You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. God had this way, and still does, of shutting things down, putting them on pause to reveal that he is still God, that he is still the ruler of the universe. And so let's begin in verse 1 of Acts chapter 9, and look at this story. It begins like this. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and he asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. So he had some pretty evil intent against God's people. But God had a course correction for Saul. And by the way, let me begin by saying that God does course corrections, not because he hates people, but because he loves people as God loves you. So we're going to see God's about to do a course correction because he loves Paul. And in our life, we'll discover he does course correction because he loves us. So we know that Paul is intent on doing bad, evil things to the Christians. Paul himself said in Acts 22, 4 through 5, he says these words, I worked hard and killed men and women who believed as I believe today. So Paul tried to hurt the Christian, and God was about to do something to cause this course correction, not because he hated Paul, but because he loved Paul, who was once called Saul. And I want to begin with that process. God is not a God of evil. He's the God of love. And anytime he intercedes and intersects into society, it's because of his love and his compassion and his caring, not because God is ever evil evil or angry with his beloved children. It it goes on to verse 3. As he, Saul, near Damascus on his journey... Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up, go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. 
Now, the second point we discover here is that when God moves, he moves quickly, he moves unexpectedly, and he moves permanently. Take into consideration that Paul had now letters from the leaders of the day with the Jewish uh, soldiers who protected the synagogue. He had armed men with him. He had letters from the leaders. He could imprison anyone he wanted. He could kill who he wanted. He could take property from who he wanted. He could destroy families wherever he wanted. He was taking his passion and going in the wrong place too quickly. God hit the pause button on Saul's life. He kicked him to the ground through a flash of light, and he was completely confused. Because God doesn't like it when people mess with his children. And by the way, why did Jesus say he was persecuting Jesus when he was persecuting Christians? Because the truth is, we are one and the same now. We are the body of Christ. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, 27, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Every year, every year around the world, there's about 100,000 Christians who are martyred for their faith. And we can see God intersecting in those areas by sending people of compassion to protect the body of Christ. But it's important to note that God could still love Saul and still hate what he's doing to Jesus or, quote-unquote, the body of Christ. So you... As a follower of Jesus, you are the embodiment of Christ on earth in the church. And so the protection that God has for Jesus as his son is the same protection he has for the body of Christ, which would be you. And right now the body of Christ is not meeting together. We're having to meet online, meet in our living rooms or our family rooms or on Zoom meetings or on telephone calls. But nonetheless, God is desiring to protect the body of Christ wherever we are. And Saul was intent on hurting the Christians. And God moved quickly. He moved unexpectedly. And he moved permanently. Can I ask you a question? With this current pandemic, which will be remembered for decades... Did any of you expect this to happen? Didn't it move quickly, unexpectedly? And it's pretty permanent. We don't know what to do about it. Again, I am not saying God caused this. I am saying God is allowing this for the moment. And God allowed Saul, who had letters saying, go get the Christians, He had soldiers, he had money, he had resources, he had the travel plans, and God put a pause on Saul's life because he had a plan. He wanted to redirect the misdirected passion of Saul. Interesting thought. Verse 7. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They had heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Isn't that amazing? Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. How intriguing is it that they had to lead him by the hand, that suddenly God, when he impacted Saul individually, He impacted others corporately. When God impacts you individually, he also impacts those around you. Because it says in Damascus, verse 10, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. For he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. 
Can we stop for a second? You know that old saying, look out for number one. You got to take care of yourself. It's all about you. Sometimes we forget that God created us to be part of the God team. And whatever happens in us happens with people around us. I see sometimes sport figures who, uh, sports figures who get themselves in trouble and say, hey, I didn't ask to be anybody's hero. And they don't realize that people do look up to them. That every action they take has a reaction for someone who's watching them and cares about them. And it goes, the same goes for you. I'm just curious because you have the ability to comment while I'm preaching today. I want you to honestly, while you're hearing me, think about who, who do you impact with your life? Put down the names of the people that are impacted by your life, whether your spouse or your children or families or students or co-workers. Put, just begin to comment. Who is it that you're impacting with your life? Because all of us impact somebody. Because God can, because God's the, the uh, supreme multitasker, he can impact you individually while impacting many corporately. Look, he impacted the men who were traveling with him. Suddenly, these men who were geared up for war to, get to arrest these Christians, they're stuck dragging around this blind Saul. So God managed to take the army and make them just people leading this blind man to a location. Then Ananias, a Christian who was afraid of the Romans, Suddenly, he's called by God to a new purpose. Then they have to go to the house of Judas on, on Straight Street. Someone else's house is being impacted. See, everything God does impacts somebody else. And so if God hits a pause button and impacts you in your life, it's because he also wants to impact those around you in your sphere of influence. We forget sometimes. And right now, I heard a funny saying. I'll tell you the saying. I was talking to some leaders. Hang on. By the way, I wanted to show you something. This is my sunshine cup. I thought, you know what? We need more sunshine right now. We need to look on the bright side in the middle of this thing. So I have this beautiful sunshine cup. I don't know if it was a gift or if I stole it from one of the employees at work. I don't remember. But I love my sunshine cup, so I'm going to keep it here for a couple weeks while I'm preaching. To remind us, God brings the sun up, he brings the sun down, God's still in control. So basically, when God does something in in your life, it's because he's trying not just to impact you with his love and his care, like he was trying to impact Saul. He wanted to impact people all around Saul including the soldiers, the Romans, and the Christians, and the other people who despise the Christians. He, he was trying to impact all of Paul's sphere of influence. It's never just about you. It's about God loving you so you can love others. So here he is, the blind man, being dragged to this fearful Ananias who knows about Paul. And he says in verse 13, Ananias says, Lord... I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. He has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. You see, one thing to remember, and this is a scary part of being a follower of Christ, is you can always choose to obey or disobey God's commands. This is what free will is all about. People sometimes that don't understand the Christian faith say, oh, Christians are a bunch of robots. They turn their minds off to believe in this myth called Jesus. It's just the opposite. We we are energized, our mind, our heart, our soul, our body, energized to its fullest to embrace the truth of a living God who intimately loves us and sent his son to die for us. 
And we have free will all the time. When God hits the pause button, he's trying to get our attention. He's disrupting the normal flow of our life. You've probably had that happen many times. You're probably feeling that way now. Every, it's, I was reading an article about crisis management. How after 30 days of quarantine, people begin to unravel. Everything in their life begins to unravel. Fear, anxiety, unravel. And I had some leaders say to me, I'm starting to unravel, Pastor. What do I do? How do I lead? I said, here's the key to leadership in a global crisis. You ready? This is for free. Unravel slower than everybody else. That's all you got to do. <laughs> you're stressed out too. I know. You're, you're freaking out about what's going to happen. Just try to unravel a little bit slower than the people that you're leading. God will take care of the rest. But for the Christian and for Ananias, who was a believer in Jesus, he could have chosen to disobey God's commands. Because here's this murderer called Saul in this house. And for all he knows, he's going to turn them in and have them killed. But God did not want to destroy this young man called Saul. He wanted to save him. Can you believe that? He wanted to save him. And so this is what we get. Verse, verse 17. Then Ananias went to the house and he entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so you may, be, you may see again and be filled with the Spirit. And Ananias was given the power. Think about this. And Ananias was given the power to lay his hands on his enemy and to heal him. I wonder how many of us, knowing what Paul had done and the evil he had done, would be willing to put our hands upon him. Mm, that's pretty intense. And so God spoke into Ananias' life because God's solutions are unique, inspired, and they point to him. God's solutions, think about this, are unique, they're inspired, and they point to him. God's solution for, for Saul was to have a Christian lay hands on him and he would be healed. Not God's solution was to kill Saul and to get rid of those soldiers. God's solution was to love Saul, heal Saul by another Christian, and have Saul become a fervent believer in Jesus Christ, and Saul be lifted up as the one who brought peace to a community filled with brokenness, to stop persecuting God's children. And so he lays hands, Ananias lays his hands on Saul, and immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. And he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. And Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. Saul, who became Paul, was healed. God Put a pause button on this work to destroy what's called, what the Bible calls the people of the way. God put everybody on pause. He wanted to save Saul. He wanted the soldiers to see the power of Jesus. And he wanted Ananias to stop being afraid. And instead of being afraid and being worried about his enemies, he wanted an Ananias in this pause, in this moment, in this quiet, to remember the bigger picture. And what is the bigger picture? The bigger picture is that God wants all humanity to be saved because when God presses play again, New leaders arise, innovations occur, and many lives are saved. I want us to take this ancient story 
that led to Paul's conversion, the man who wrote so much of the New Testament, who planted so many churches. It wouldn't have happened if God didn't put a pause on what was the, the global world at that time. Roman, the Roman Empire was the known world of the day, and God put a pause on it by striking a man named Saul to the ground and by a Christian taking his position of leadership and praying for his enemy. And his enemy was healed, and his enemy became his greatest advocate. Can you see the hand of God working today? Can you see it possibly working in your life? God hitting the pause button, disrupting the status quo. Now, I know how you feel. You feel like I feel, like um, this is out of control. I have no control. There's nothing I can do to fix this. Maybe your health is just getting worse and worse. Maybe the stress, the strain of your family is getting worse. Maybe your job has been eliminated for now. Maybe you feel overwhelmed by trying to connect on social media. All these things is God putting a pause. And that pause can create in you the ability to innovate, the ability to be the next great leader, the ability to say, I'm tired of blaming people. I'm not going to blame anybody anymore. From this day forward, I choose to seek out those who I have influence over. And when I find those people who have influence, that I have influence over, I'm going to tell them courageously about my relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe the fear that we had before this happened will dissipate. And maybe before God presses play again and our lives get back to normal, He's going to allow this pause to go on a little bit longer so we as the Christians who have been empowered by the Holy Spirit decide we will walk in the power and authority we already had but we simply didn't use. And so who and how are you going to respond to this global pause and God's call upon your life knowing other people depend on your leadership, on your innovation? Other lives can be saved because of you. So here's my question during our wonders phase of this service. What is God asking you to do in this moment? What change, no matter how uncomfortable, is he asking of you? Write it right now in the comments. Put it on, put it on paper. We, I keep asking you to do this on purpose because as you write it, You're confirming it before the Holy Spirit. Will you make a commitment now to do what God's asked you to do? If that's true, if you're going to make that commitment, say yes. Just put in, yes, I make that commitment, Pastor. Yes. Tell me yes, that you indeed will do what Ananias did. You will be brave and courageous in the face of your fear, and you will go do the thing that you haven't been doing until now. I truly believe, even though I think the enemy created the virus, God is raising up his people. He's raising up you for this moment. And if you're listening today and someone shared this uh, link with you and you don't yet follow Christ, today is your moment, today is your day to get right with Jesus. Very simply put, we know we do wrong. And when you do wrong before a perfect God, it is called sin. And the only way to fix that sin before a perfect God is to have someone take it away. And the only one who could take it away is someone who had no sin. And that's Jesus Christ, God's Son. And He came. He had no sin. He was God. He was man. He died for you. He died for me. He shed His innocent blood. And then after three days, He rose again. And he proved that he had, li- he had power over life and death. And the way you get right with God is to ask forgiveness of your sins, your wrongdoings, in the name of this Jesus who died for you. So I'm going to pray that prayer right now and ask you to pray it with me. And if you are going to follow Christ today, you're going to let me know as soon as this prayer, prayer is done. So pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, 
I know that you are a perfect God. I know that I am not perfect. But I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe he died for me, shed his innocent blood for me, and he rose again. Would you help me from this day forward serve you? Would you let me know that I've been forgiven of all my sins and that I can be with you forever? And would you help me live this out every day in Jesus' name? Amen. So if you said yes to following Jesus, I want you to put a comment in the comment section. Just say, I said yes. I said yes. I said yes. And we will connect with you. We'll send you some information to help you. We'll get you in life groups. Even though right now they're virtual Zoom life groups, we'll connect you to someone to help you. And also every Monday through Thursday at 747, I have a morning update at 747 a.m. called Morning Inspiration with Pastor Rini. So get on Facebook, watch me live, Rini M. Charest. It'll be on Valley Christian Center's Facebook starting next week. At Monday through Thursday, 747 a.m., and you can get a Bible study every morning on those four days before I see you again next Sunday. Well, you're doing a great job. Continue to send me your stories. I'm listening. I, I love to hear how God is doing works of victory in your life. But make sure you go encourage somebody else. So right now, as we're coming to the conclusion of this message, share this link with someone you know. Share this link with your contacts. Share this link on YouTube or Facebook or wherever. Because the more you share it, the more people get to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. And then when God decides to take off the pause button, and only God will make that happen. And when he hits play, boop, you will be the leader the innovator, the one God has raised up for the next generation, you will be that one. I'm so proud of you. Remember what I keep saying. You are going to be the heroes and heroines of this story. And I have one new Reniism that I have I'd like to share with you in closing. That life will never be the same. It will be better. And if you believe that, put that in the comment now. Life will never be the same. It will be better. God bless you. I love you. Have an incredible week. Good morning, ladies. Pastor Christy here. I am super excited to invite you to a watch party that we're hosting tonight on Facebook at 7 o'clock. We're featuring Christian psychologist Dr. Tammy Tucker. She actually was the guest speaker at our women's retreat this year, and she did a fantastic job leading us in freedom. And tonight her topic is how to navigate our thoughts during this worldwide pandemic. I find her incredibly fresh and practical and insightful. I think you're really gonna enjoy her. So please join us tonight at seven. You can find us by clicking on the VCC Fresno Facebook page and liking us under the group section or you can click on the link below. Ladies, please know how much I love you, how much I miss you, and how much I'm praying for you. I hope to see you tonight.